as this is the final season of The Walking Dead, a lot of characters' stories will be coming to an end. So I wanted to make a new series on the channel called The End Of, where I will explain and predict the end of each individual character's stories. As this is the final season, the end of these characters will be a lot more brutal. As the final season of Better Call Saul is on the way, I will involve characters in that show and others in this series too. Today, we are talking about the fate of Rosita. The end of Rosita. With some strange foreshadowing happening in season 10, we have been getting fed by the show on how her story ends, and it has become way too similar to a very early character in the Walking Dead comics, and with the Reapers attacking in episode 8, it seems the brutal end that that character had is steering scarily close to Rosita. So how will Rosita's story end in The Walking Dead Season 11? Keep watching to find out. Of course, before we begin, make sure you subscribe so that you are the first to see my videos. Also, I've just announced I've got a gaming channel, and very soon, I'm going to start uploading to it regularly. On the top right of your screen right about now, a drop-down box will appear if you just tap or click on that, and then simply go onto the channel and then press subscribe on it, you would make my day in two seconds. It means a lot, thank you. Now, in episode 8 of season 11, it's very likely that the Reapers will attack Alexandria and give them a really brutal beating. Regardless of the reason behind the Reapers doing it, they're going to want to kill every single person in there. This is where Gabriel, Rosita, and baby Coco reside. So very similar to what happened in season 10, episode 10, where Beta infiltrated Alexandria, Rosita's going to need to defend her home. Although many of the fighters of Alexandria left the community exposed because they all pretty much left it undefended, it was just Beta and he did a lot of damage. This time there's 11 Reapers, most of them being the size of Beta, and these are just the Reapers we've seen. They've likely got a big group wherever they hide out, so whatever characters were never meant to make it to the Commonwealth story arc, they will be taken out by episode 8. So let's look at this scene from issue 48 in the comics, where we see Rick, Carl, Laurie, and Judith flee from the prison after the governor's attack. It's here that you're going to see how different Rick and Laurie in the comics were to Rick and Laurie in the show, and their storyline is much more similar to Gabriel and Rosita's. Rick, Laurie, Carl, Judith, and Alice are getting ready to make a run for it to flee the prison and avoid the governor and his men. We should really be on our way. They could be inside already, so everyone stick close and stay quiet. We want to hear them before they hear us. Let's move. Just stick close to me when we get out there. If I say drop, you drop. Stay close to anything we're hiding behind, and if we're in the open at any point, just keep moving, no matter what happens. Is that the plan? We just make a run for it? What's going on out there? Are we going to walk out into a wall of guns firing at us? We just hope to make it to the truck? That's it? That's the best I can do. If we stay here, we're dead for sure. If we get out there, make a run for it, we might just live. That's the situation. That's all we've got to go on. It's going to be okay. We're leaving out of the door closest to the truck. Hershel and the rest should be meeting us there. This will work. We'll be okay. We just need to hurry. Come on. Keep moving. We've got to get to the truck before they see us. They haven't gotten to this area yet. Herschel? Herschel! Let's go, come on. Just leave me. There. There are more of them. Follow me. Start running. I'll try to clear a few of them out before I join you. Go. Bitch. Take them out, now. his gun looked like he was surrendering. Shut up. Dear God, please, just kill me. Are 
you just witnessed a scene from the Walking Dead comic issue that has the most death counts in a single issue than any other. In issue 48, we saw the death of Laurie, Judith, the Governor, Herschel, Billy, Patricia and Alice. These are the major characters that died in the issue. And I just showed you the death of Laurie, Judith and Herschel. Just seconds after this, the governor dies, and that's what makes Laurie and especially Judith's death really easy to avoid and almost pointless because it's Lily that shoots him. After she already shoots Laurie and realizes that she fell into her baby, it was that that finally turned her, but she spent issues with him and killed him way too late. Now, the reason we're talking about issue 48 in this video and that scene, that particular scene, is because it's really likely to translate into season 11. Now obviously Herschel's death was remixed with Tyrese. Everyone on the internet knows about that. So yeah, a scene that would have happened back in season 4 with the governor still alive is completely possible to happen in season 11 purely by looking at Gabriel and Rosita's relationship. It's actually far more like Rick and Laurie in the comics than Rick and Laurie in the show. The reason this death didn't happen in the show is because their relationship was different and they actually wanted, of course, Judith to survive. Although the last time we saw Gabriel and Rosita, they were both fine. They've been having the same issues as Rick and Laurie did in the comics. In season 10, episode 8, Rosita comes to talk to Gabriel about her freezing up on a walker and having to have Eugene come and save her. That's when you know it's bad if Eugene's out to save you. She's expressing all this doubt about Coco becoming an orphan, and Gabriel just says, Well, feelings don't predict the future. You freeze again. You won't. You're not listening. I have to hear what I said. You needed help with a walker, and now you think you'll keep needing help, and I'm saying the feeling will pass. This scene was great at displaying both of the characters' weaknesses, the stress of Gabriel, and where his mind is, and as we've seen, this just led to him being cold. He's not believing in what he used to believe in. Whilst his emotional partner was trying to find solace in talking to him, he was just cold and more wrapped up in what he thought was his own responsibility. Now, he does have that responsibility, but this just shows that he can't handle it. That's why the arrival of the Whisperer story arc was when Gabriel's temper started to shorten. The Whisperers were meant to insert paranoia, yet with Gabriel, it was more stress. And with Rosita, she didn't show fear that she'd just die. Her fear was surrounding Coco. She's more worried about her daughter. And if it was just Rosita saying she's scared that she might freeze and get bitten for her, she's scared that she might die. Yeah, this scene was done to show Gabriel's stress and how he didn't really show much care towards Rosita. But it was also showing Rosita's anxiety and her doubts towards her own strength. In the latest teaser trailer we got for season 11, one of the first shots we see is Carol and Alden together. A weird mix, but it's because they're in the same scenes together in the two-part premiere. They're underground in the subway. A shot we also see is Aaron and Rosita at Alexandria. It's going to be Aaron telling Rosita what he saw Gabriel do in episode 19 when he killed Maze. What he heard Gabriel say, he's losing hope. He's going to tell Rosita about it. Or Rosita's going to notice that Aaron's quiet. She's going to bring something up and one way or another they will both discuss what's going on with Gabriel. Which even further shows us that he's going to get Dwight's comic death. And that sounds weird, isn't it? If I'm saying Gabriel dies, which one is it? Rosita or Gabriel? Both. This season is said to be more brutal, more dark, and I think it will be, relentlessly so. When the Reapers attack in episode 8, I think it's going to be very similar to what happened in issue 48. When Rick shot Dwight dead in the comics, it was because of what Dwight was doing. He had just lost Sherry. He was unhinged. He was angry at the Commonwealth. And he took matters into his own hands because he wasn't thinking straight. Especially with Aaron and Gabriel consulting behind his back, they're clearly already seeing him in that light. But what does Gabriel have in the show right now that Dwight didn't in the comics? Rosita. Sherry died not long before he would go mad like this and have to be put down. When the Reapers attack in episode 8, what do you think stops that? The Commonwealth. But they will clearly arrive when it's too late, when a lot of people have been killed. Yeah, they take out the Reapers, but there will be deaths. And I think the Reapers will shoot Rosita as she runs with Coco. Gabriel witnesses it, and we're left with a very upset, a grieving angry Gabriel. He was already like this in episode 19, but after losing Rosita and Kirk after he knows she tried to talk to him about it, he's going to be regretful, frustrated, angry, upset. Rosita's death is what needs to happen for Gabriel to get to that stage for when he can get Dwight's comic death. Who will shoot him? 
Aaron. It will still be Aaron, especially, like I said, even more so with them already having doubts and worries about him. When the Commonwealth Guards arrive at Alexandria in Episode 8 and take out the Reapers, it's going to show the characters that are there how much better they are because they handled it and they couldn't. The only character that won't be happy will be Gabriel because he doesn't have Rosita. He will instantly be bitter because they were too late. If they really do have Rosita's death, so similar to Laurie's death, they could even have one of the Commonwealth Guards be the one to shoot Rosita on accident. I mean, this scene itself was an accident. Lily didn't mean to shoot her mother for her to fall onto her baby. This is scarily perfect for the show, for the characters to be grateful for the Commonwealth, but to see where its faults are. I mean, think about it, hitting Princess, then accidentally shooting a mother and her falling onto her baby, then having Gabriel be rebellious and instantly be just a completely different character. The full actual arrival of the Commonwealth isn't going to be perfect. They're not just going to be the heroes that arrive on the scene and save everyone from the Reapers. They're going to make some characters bitter. Of course, this video is talking about the end of Rosita, the end of her story. Her story was really only supposed to exist until the start of the Whisperer arc, because in the comics, that's when she died. Now, that's not any reason to go by, but, I mean, just look at why she was kept on. Have a baby with Sadiq, to have a relationship with Gabriel, to talk more with Eugene. It's all regarding around Coco. She exists for Coco. Other than that, she literally has not done anything. It's because she was only kept on to have Coco and affect Gabriel. If Gabriel has anything to do with Rosita's death, of course Gabriel will be grieving, but Aaron will have even more reason to shoot him because Rosita would have already discussed with him about how cold he was to her. Because Rosita's death will push Gabriel over the edge. He's on the very edge of it right now. He's lost his belief. He's lost who he is. He's lost his temper. Rosita's death will do him. Aaron will have to put him down. So, with Rosita being so kept back in the story, but only existing for Coco and affecting Gabriel, I do think she will die in a very similar fashion to how Laurie did, leading to Gabriel becoming a monster, becoming unhinged, and Aaron will have to put him down too. But, what do you think? Do you think this is how Rosita will die? How do you think Rosita's story will end? Do you think this is how it's all going to happen? Comment down below and let me know what you think. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure you press the like button. It genuinely helps me out and get this video seen by more people. And of course, if you did enjoy it, then check out my other videos. Check out this one for all the latest on the Clementine sequel. And watch this video where I prove Elijah is a Reaper. And of course, make sure you subscribe so that you're the first to see my videos. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.